Hey, and welcome to the beautiful Merritt Greenhouse. I'm Laura Flower, and today we're talking about how to start plants by seed. So today we've got some great examples to show you how to do that at home and to talk about some of the principles involved so that you can have great success in your planting endeavors. Why is planting by seed or growing plants by seed an interesting topic in the first place? Well, there's multiple reasons for that. One of the main reasons is that you can find a much greater variety of plants um, when buying them as seeds rather than buying them at a local nursery um, to go home and, and take to your garden. Another really wonderful reason to start plants by seed is that it can be really cost effective. Oftentimes, small, you know, four inch tomato plant at a, at a nursery can cost anywhere from two to five dollars. And when you do it on your own, once you've got a few basic supplies purchased, you can uh, maybe save a few bucks and um, have it be economical to grow what you need. Another really wonderful thing is that you will always grow more uh, plants than you probably need for your own home garden. So it's awesome to be able to share those seedlings with friends, family, neighbors, and grow your community based on what you decide. And lastly, it is amazing to see things grow from seed all the way through your greenhouse or indoor environment, out into the field, and through the growing season. And when you harvest that first tomato, knowing that you've started it by seed with your very own hands, it's an awesome experience that enriches what it, what it means to garden. Before we talk about how to start plants by seed, something we need to talk about is what do you want to grow and what kind of space do you have to work with? So I always suggest having some type of plan or idea of what it is that you want to try and fit in your garden. So whether you have a five by five garden or you have a quarter acre, knowing how much produce or how many plants can fit in that space once they've reached full size. So there's a great example here of a, one of our community garden boxes that are five feet by 20 feet. So if I try and grow 20 you know, tomatoes and 10 melons and I expect them all to fit in that size, in that size space, it's probably not gonna work out really well. So draw out a plan as best you can, even if it's just a sketch on what it is you're really excited to grow and how many of those items when combined can actually fit in your space. So once you've figured out how many plants and what types you want to grow in your garden, the next step is to understand how seeds grow, right? If you're growing a tomato plant, you might approach that very differently than if you want to grow uh, carrots. So plants can be categorized in basically four main groups. Uh, the first are seeds that can be planted directly in the garden in spring. So usually March 1st, the ground thaws and you can go ahead and plant those things directly in the garden. Those would be things like carrots and onions and arugula and lettuce, items that can tolerate really cold temperatures or colder temperatures. The next category would be plants that can tolerate cold but can benefit from being grown beforehand in a greenhouse or indoor environment and then transplanted outside. For example, we've got a flat of broccoli here and we started those um, several weeks ago and we anticipate being able to plant those outside in about mid-April. So another category of plants are those that can be planted directly in the garden but cannot tolerate cold temperatures. For example, green beans. There's not really a lot of benefit of, of, uh, for planting them inside, and it's best to just plant them outside after you have reached your last frost. And we'll talk more about that in a moment. The last category, and probably one that people are most interested in, are growing our summer-loving crops that are our most favorite table items in the summertime. Things like tomatoes and melons and winter squash, cucumbers. And that's kind of the area that we're gonna talk about today. Every seedling is all about timing. So tomato plants take much less time to grow than say pepper plants. 
And that predicts when we decide to start those items indoors as seeds to prepare them to be seedlings by the time our planting season comes around. Here in Utah, we get very cold temperatures and our growing season is considerably short. And so we are planning everything around when we want to plant those items outdoors. So in Salt Lake um, and the surrounding area, generally it is at least after Mother's Day, generally the second or third week of May, that we're gonna plan to go ahead and plant those summer loving crops outside. So when we do that, we have to count back from the time we want to plant, again, say it's the second week of May, and we want to plant, uh, count backwards um, and give the proper time for each type of plant. So for example, tomato plants don't need more than about four to six weeks before that second week of May to be ready to plant outside. And that is if you want to plant it in like a four inch pot. Um, this is not a tomato plant, because here in Utah, we are still in the middle of February, and it is far too early to be starting tomatoes in general. So, you can increase the time that you wanna give something like a tomato if you give it a proper size uh, before it's ready to go outside. We'll talk about how plants get too big for a pot and how they get root bound here in a moment as well. Um, if you are really interested in uh, growing non-edible crops, uh, flowers and things like that, then I highly recommend this wonderful book called The Ball Culture Guide. And this gives you all the information that you would need to know. If you want to plant that beautiful zinnia that you love and you want to try growing it uh, by yourself from seed, then this would be a wonderful resource to try. So a few notes on selecting proper seeds. Um, I've got here some examples of some seed packets, and I have ordered these online from a reputable uh, seed company. It's uh, really important to buy your seeds from a company you, you know has a good reputation and you're gonna actually get what you want, not, in not only in terms of what it is. You don't order a tomato and it ends up being a cucumber, or that the quality of the seed um, is at its peak and that you actually get the germination percentages that you're shooting for. So know where you're getting your seeds. Um, once you've purchased your seeds, uh, they can last for several years if they're stored in the proper condition. So if they're stored in a cool, dark place, they can last multiple years. Unless you are working with a seed that is uh, coated, um, Sometimes growers will coat very small seeds in kind of a, a material that makes it easier to seed them. For those types of seeds, their germination percentage goes down dramatically after the first year. So that's something to keep in mind. As we move on and actually talk about how we plant our seeds and um, talk about transplanting, there's a few things that are helpful to know. Now you can certainly reuse materials in your household to start plants by seed, absolutely. Something like an old egg container or a plastic container from your yogurt or whatever. Um, the big thing is that whatever container you use needs to have proper drainage in the bottom. Just like us, um, roots need oxygen and oil in order to live, so if you don't have holes in the bottom and that water continues to build in the container, then you will get things like root rot, um, you'll get algae buildup and different things that can be problematic in, in maintaining the health of your seedling. For us here in our greenhouse, and even if you are a home grower, something like a germination tray can be really helpful in starting seeds. You can actually pick something like this up from a uh, local hardware store or um, you can order it online and it's probably around a dollar. So this tray, for example, holds 200 cells and it can be really handy for multiple reasons. The main reason is that not every seed that you plant is going to germinate. So if you plant every seed that you want to plant in a container like this, well that takes up a whole lot of space. 
Um, in this environment, you can see what has germinated well, and you can also select the most healthy seedlings to transplant into a larger pot. So in order to do that, what we're gonna use uh, today as an example is just a four inch uh, pot. Again, these are very common. You can get these anywhere. Um, or you can step your plants up once they have matured beyond this stage into something like a yogurt container. So you can see here, this has got holes in the bottom um, and it's a, a great environment for a seedling to grow up. So when we seed plants, into our what are called germination trays, uh, we use a different type of soil. So in this soil, you can see it's really light, um, fluffy, and it's got pieces of vermiculite and some other helpful um, materials that are optimal for uh, germination. Once we uh, move beyond this point, then we are going to use the soil that's in this four inch pot. So, this is called a transplanting soil, very common. Let me just back up and mention that. So the, the finer material is germination soil. The more coarse uh, soil is called transplanting soil. You can get these at any local nursery um, to find what you need. You'll notice that there are bigger chunks in here and mainly what that is are things like coconut core. Um, these little white pearls in there are actually um, called perlite and they are volcanic glass. Um, it, is an, it's an, it is an organic material, and it essentially just helps with drainage. It also helps with moisture retention at the same time, and so it's a, a wonderful kind of additive to um, a, a more long-term soil, like a transplanting soil. So we're gonna do a little example of how to seed. Um, we're going to use tomatoes as an example, but just remember that again being middle of February here in Utah is still quite early to be starting those unless you want to have a five gallon sized tomato with fruits on it by the time you're going to plant. So I want to just show you a good example of some basic seeding. So what we've done is we put our germination soil in our tray and then we are going to uh, water it in really well and offer a nice environment for that seed to start its journey. So again, depending on the size of your seeds, tomato seeds are quite small. Um, and in general, you wanna uh, cover a seed about twice the size, cover it as deep as about twice the size of the seed. So, Tomato seeds are quite small, and we're gonna just start by putting them in the soil, making sure there's a little bit of contact between the seed and the soil, and then we'll go around and we will cover it afterwards. I highly recommend if you are doing this to use some labels um, to uh, mark how many you've grown and maybe where another variety uh, begins. And so that's a pretty simple part of the process. Just remember that after you seed, um, the number one reasons that plants tend to fail in the garden is because we love them too much. We overwater them, we give them a little uh, too, too much attention, and sometimes that can, uh, can be their, their demise, mainly by overwatering. So after you have seeded and um, covered your soil, the main thing that you're looking to do is just keep them consistently moist, but not sopping. What we're working with right now are some broccoli seedlings, as well as some flowers on each side. And if you look here, you can see that every plant sort of grows a little bit differently. Um, here in the middle, like I said, we have broccoli, and we're gonna talk about how to know when to transplant. The initial a uh, leaf that comes up, up once the seedling actually sprouts is called a cotyledon leaf. And that is a leaf that does not resemble the mature leaf on that whatever plant that you're growing. So generally we wanna wait to transplant until the second or true leaf uh, sprouts on that plant. 
Another really important way to know if it's ready to grow is if there are roots coming out of the bottom of the tray or if you test it, which you can easily do. Some of you already have one of the tools that you need to grow, grow, start, grow plants by seed, which is a chopstick. Very fancy, right? We've all got one in our drawer somewhere. And this is an awesome tool to help with transplanting. So what we're gonna do is actually just select one of the broccolis here in the middle. Uh, like I said, they have the cotyledon and then the true leaf, so I suspect that they're getting ready to transplant, to be transplanted. So what we're gonna do is just poke our uh, chopstick in the bottom hole of the one that we wanted to come out. And we're just gonna gently pull that out. And you're trying to keep it intact as much as you can. And here we are. So on this, I can see that the roots have grown out around the cell. They're even starting to pop out um, underneath the uh, tray. And that's a nice, good root structure that's ready to be transplanted. Now, if you were to try and do this and, um, and all you're getting is your chopstick or whatever it is poking through and it doesn't really look like it's established yet, well then don't transplant it quite yet. So once we've decided that that seedling is ready to be bumped up to a larger size pot, then this is another really helpful tool. It does not have to be something that you purchase necessarily. It's just a small piece of wood. It's called a dibber. And it just helps to actually make the hole in your pot. Now, if you're just growing uh, you know, five or 10 seedlings, then not a big deal. A finger works just as well. Um, but it can be a helpful tool if you're growing quite a bit. Um, so that's another great tool to have. So now what we've got is we've got our soil. Um, when we place the soil in our pot, it's really important not to compact it down with our fingers. And it's also important that it is wet. It's a nice uh, moist environment for that seedling to start the next phase of its life. So like I said, we're gonna pull out our, our seedling. And when we do that, it's really important not to pull up uh, too hard on the stem. Really, you're just using your fingers on either side to help um, support that. And then we're gonna go ahead and place that in the pot. Now, from here, we wanna add, uh, we wanna first make sure that where that seedling is on the soil line is the same once we've transplanted it. So we don't wanna cover that whole stem. If you do that, you can get issues with, um, with rotting and things like that. Unless, pro tip, it's something like a tomato or a tomatillo, which is unlike any other seedling in that its whole stem actually has root hairs on it and planting it deeper can help, that, uh, help it establish quicker and develop stronger roots. But in this case, because we're doing broccoli, uh, we are gonna put it at the soil line. And then we are just going to add a slight bit of pressure right at the base of that plant so that there's good contact between the soil and the pot and the soil around the root system. So now that we've got it in this phase of things, um, you might wanna give it one more water before you set it aside. Um, in this, uh, greenhouse environment, uh, we generally start fertilizing about two weeks after we've planted. So there are a lot of options out there on products that you can use to fertilize with, both organic and inorganic. Because that's such a big topic, we won't be talking about it much today. So for something like a broccoli, this will probably be a wonderful size until you're ready to grow it uh, or plant it outside. For something like a tomato, where it grows exceptionally fast in the pot, you may need to keep an eye on um, the root system to make sure that it's not becoming what's called root bound in its pot. So this is an example here of not a tomato, but a annual flower. And I'm gonna use this as an example to know if a plant is becoming root bound or not. So this is a lobelia a vining plant that we put in our hanging baskets. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our fingers, our hands on both sides of the plant and just gently turn it upside down. And then you can just gently uh, massage the pot and it should just slip right off. 
So here we've got an awesome example of a root system once a plant has been in um, a larger container for a while. So assessing this root ball here, it looks great. The roots are uh, developing nicely. Um, they're not in, you know, uh, they don't look like they're uh, kind of competing with each other. So if you pick this up and you saw that the roots were starting to circle around pretty intensively around the base of the pot or the side of the pot, that is a good indicator that your plant needs to be stepped up into a larger container. In most circumstances, transplanting seedlings into a larger four inch pot is a wonderful way to go. There's an exception to that, um, or there can be an exception to that. So for items that are what are called in the cucurbit family, so those would be things like cantaloupe, cucumbers, melons, winter squash, those types of plants are very sensitive to being transplanted. And so if you would like um, a little bit more ease of planting for those items, then you can use what's called uh, a biopot. Um, it's just made out of a material that, the, um, that can be planted directly in the ground with just a little bit of uh, breaking open the bottom. And it can really help those items to take off and accelerate faster than if they have to go through the stress of being transplanted from a pot to the ground. Once you have seeded your plants, putting them in the right environment to thrive is really important. Most of us are probably going to be growing our items indoors, and in that case, you are looking for a um, south-facing or southwest-facing window um, so that it's nice and warm and uh, kind of provides the best environment for your seeds to take off. Now, you can do your best to, again, use, use whatever space that you have that you feel like would be best, that gets the most sun. Uh, you will know if your seedlings, once they've germinated, are really hungry for light because they will have very long stems and it'll, you will literally see them reaching towards whatever window uh, they're receiving that light from. So in that case, if you try this out this year and you notice that they are all kind of very hungry for light, then a grow light might be a really good option for you. Um, if you keep your thermostat at 50 degrees in the winter time, then something like a, a grow mat might be a helpful option. You can buy these at a lot of different places for anywhere from 50 to $150, and they last for multiple years. And it's a nice way to offer uh, some heat from the bottom that just stimulates that growth and um, again gets your plants off to a great start. So once we've gotten our plants to a nice size and we are getting them ready to plant it, you know, after Mother's Day, you can do one more helpful thing for your little babies that you have put so much energy into and that is to prepare them to go out into the outside world. When you start your seeds indoors, it's probably warm, and nice and sunny, um, and so uh, seedlings can go into a bit of shock if they are transitioned outside uh, without a little bit of sort of practice in the cold weather. So one thing you can do is to put your uh, seedlings in a box, um, and as you approach your planting date, put them outside during the daytime, assuming the temperatures are not you know, maybe below 50 degrees or there's not severe weather happening and get them acclimated to uh, the outside fluctuations of temperature and sun and they will generally do much better for you than uh, just throwing them out and seeing what happens. So there you have it. Got a good idea about how to select the right seeds, uh, plant them, transplant them and get them ready to go outside. If you have any questions about what we've talked about here today or you'd like some clarification, feel free to reach out in the section below and we would be more than happy to give you a helping hand. Thanks so much and thanks for joining.